One of the most common motivations for getting started with a tool like RDoc is to enable you to build better assess and manage an evolving IT portfolio. The motivation for doing this is likely attributed to either a history of mergers and acquisitions, a history of acquiring applications faster than you can get rid of the legacy ones, um, or a, a new need to be able to reconfigure your organization to either address market dynamics and developing of new products or potentially reducing costs. No matter what the motivation is, the techniques underlying each of those types of tra transformation processes are relatively the same. In RDoC, we have a series of best practices which you can deploy to rapidly get your time to value, but you can also extend upon those in order to tailor our approach to meet your unique needs. So let's take a look at this. In this case, we're looking at how you can combine things like application lifecycle management, integration management, as well as business capability modeling and realization, and technology capability modeling in order to get an understanding of where is your application portfolio, what is it delivering, and uh, what you can do in order to optimize that. Creating the first list of applications or repository can be done in a many, different, many different ways. The fact is most of our organizations have some level of structured data which they want to integrate or import. Luckily, RDoc comes out of the box with a variety of tooling, both from Excel to ServiceNow to fully open REST APIs and connectors in order to import structured data. The great thing is that gives you a running start to immediately start visualizing the data you already have and start identifying opportunities for improvement. Once you get that data in, you're gonna to wanna to be able to track progress and actually involve a wider organization. And one of the biggest factors for the success of enterprise architecture is the transparency of the value you, you deliver. So being able to, for example, send a governance dashboard or a progress report to your stakeholders who are the executive sponsors of your initiatives to be able to show how are things progressing, how are you um, coming along in regards to data quality collection and cost reductions or whatever the motivation might be. These can be combined with things like broadcast so that they're triggered and sent to those individuals on either a time or event-based uh, method. Once the data comes in though, you're gonna to wanna to be able to start slicing and dicing it in order to be able to tell stories about potential areas of improvement. The fact is though, with automated visualizations like RDoc, you can quickly get into a space where you have too much data to actually tell a meaningful story. This is why it's so important to have the ability to drill down and set context to your data instead of having to manually draw large diagrams. For this instance, we're gonna look at how we can actually take the power of the graph and the connectivity of this data to things like business units or departments in order to filter and create better application portfolio uh, viewpoints. In this case, I'm gonna look at adding a filter by the sales organization for Asia. And right there with one click, I've actually filtered all of my application portfolio to just those apps that are attributed or used by that department. The benefit of this is, is I did not have to duplicate these, this data. I did not have to duplicate the visualizations. I did not have to spend hours of, of analysis in order to identify which apps this department uses. Instead, I was able to leverage the data we already had in order to create a automated visualization. This can then be used in order to start prioritizing where we're gonna change our application portfolio. Getting this data in, of course, is not necessarily trivial. You need to be able to map and give context to what is the purpose of your applications. One way of doing that is connecting them to your capabilities or your products. In doing so, you can actually create a much more unified vision of how do our applications support our business needs and be able to communicate to business stakeholders. Getting that communication right is really critical for securing the budget necessary to really enact change. How we map this data can be done in multiple ways, either as a core group of architects, but more likely what we, we recommend is actually involving the experts in the field. So through a series of broadcast surveys and discover viewpoints, we're able to engage a much wider audience than a traditional EA tool to, would and reduce your manual labor from interviewing and Excel manipulation to simply looking at the data and enacting change. Let's move on to thinking about how you can actually take all this data in order to report. You can roll that up into dashboards. You can publish those dashboards into presentations like you see on the right-hand side here, or you can share those dashboards on a regular basis. But you wanna be able to do is also drill down. So if I wanted to say, look at all the applications that are on on-premise, being able to drill down into that dashboard is critical. Another aspect of optimization is actually looking at how do we realize these capabilities and how well are they doing so. So what you see here is a connectivity between our business capabilities and our applications and a grading of those applications based on two different factors, strategic fit and technical fit. Now that is one way of, of evaluating an application. And in order to do that, what we've actually done is triggered a broadcast that goes out to the experts or the owners of those apps and ask them to answer simple surveys. If I click on this link, which is an example of how that broadcast could be sent, you'll see that I am an owner or an expert 
for four different applications. By clicking on one of those, I can review the questions at hand. And by adding scores to these simple questions, I'm actually creating a strategic fit score that is a calculation based on that. That data then is immediately piped back into your RDoC repository, and then you can utilize that for triggering other workflows or potentially identifying your, your opportunities for change. Now, the important thing here is these can be triggered on a regular basis, on a periodic basis, or based on an event like a renewal coming up. You can do the same thing for technical capabilities. Um, but ideally, what you want to do is start to understand how am I going to maneuver change and how am I going to use other aspects in order to motivate the change. So one of the most common things that is underlooked is the fact that we often have great information in um, different tooling like uh, our contract management systems in order to understand when do we have renewals coming up on these applications that can enrich our APM or application portfolio, uh, as well as an act change. So in this case, we've imported all of our contracts from a, a purchasing tool. We've brought in the, the attributes necessary in order to understand the, understand the value and the life cycle of that contract. And we've used that with a series of broadcasts to be able to notify the application owners. So here at an interval prior to renewal, we're notifying them that, hey, your contract or your application is up for renewal. And what that does is actually give them a view of what that thing is, what is it governed. So here you see two different applications under that contract. You see that they're actually planned to end their life cycle, yet the, the application or the contract is not. So that might be an opportunity for change. They can also drill down to understand what is that contract or what is that application? You know, what products is it supporting? Um, what locations or objectives and initiatives are supporting. And we see that it's actually not supporting much here. So it's probably a good opportunity to remove that application. But of course, you need to be able to manage all the other things that come with it with things like integrations and other dependencies. Which brings me to my final point is once you start identifying where you want to evolve or where things are evolving, you're going to want to be able to model future state scenarios. So in, in RDoC, what you actually have is the ability to branch your data, identify the changes you want to make, run data-driven analysis on the differentiation between your current designs and your future designs, and maintain connectivity to your evolving ecosystem around that data and the as-is. The reason for that is design often outlives the changes it was based on. So when you, when you branch off your data to make a future state design, that's going to take potentially weeks, months, years to actually implement while your architecture evolves. So being able to keep those two things in sync, make sure that the reality is, is as aligned to the design as possible is critical in your execution ability. But once you do the basics of APM, you have the foundation to really expand on your use case in order to drive much, much more valuable insights on the same data with small amounts of, of uh, new data brought into context. In this case, what we're looking at is how can we model things like technolo technology lifecycle management and technical risk and other types of risks against our existing architecture in order to take a, a unique perspective, partner up with probably the CISO office, and be able to start thinking about risk in the context of our apps as well. So all we've done here is loaded a new best practice to enrich our APM with the perspective of risk, and we out of the box now get a bunch of different calculations on how we want to model risk and how we can think about that in, in our evaluation. We can also take things like lifecycle management for the technology we depend on and roll that up to the applications or even the products or, or capabilities to ensure we know what things are at risk and identify and notify those individuals who are potentially impacted by that risk. We can also manage to model our, our controls so that we can actually create different viewpoints of the risks and controls of all of our apps so that we can keep those that are actually responsible fully informed. As we know, the most successful risk uh, or security policies are those that are part of culture. So being able to help support that is critical. In RDoC Discover, we have the ability for us to actually look at um, each individual application from a variety of different contexts, depending on the user's uh, user rights. So in this case, I can look at a, an application from the risk perspective and see all the associated risks because I have access to that. That awareness is something that usually is far fragmented from other change processes or, or application portfolio management. And with that, we'll wrap up the, uh, the use case around how do you manage an evolving IT portfolio. And it's just important to note that RDoC's out-of-the-box best practices are a great way of getting started, but that flexibility and extendability is really what's going to ensure your continued future success.